Set your intentions are not my dimensions. I think that it's time you should leave. And if you don't mind, hop off my line, because I am inclined to find a new dime. What's up, UFC fans? Creative director Brian Hayes here with some tips to help you out when it comes to striking in EA Sports UFC 3. First things first, you're trying to do damage to your opponent. You can attack your opponent's head, body, or legs, each of which has its own health meter. The more damage you do to a region over a short period of time, the more likely you are to cause a health event, like a stun, knockdown, or knockout. But it's not as simple as just throwing as many strikes as you can. Your fighter also has a stamina meter, and every action you perform costs a li little bit of stamina. Big fancy spinning strikes cost more stamina than quick basic strikes. And missing strikes cost more stamina than landing. Most importantly, your strikes do less damage when your stamina is low, and you take more damage when your stamina is low. If you throw a bunch of strikes and blow your stamina, one good shot from a savvy opponent might put you on the floor. Always moving forward and throwing a lot of strikes without a care for stamina or defense is also dangerous because it increases your vulnerability. Moving into the path of any strike will increase its effectiveness. Getting caught by the strike in the middle of throwing your own can be particularly dangerous. And both of those things get worse if your stamina is low. So, mix up your strikes, watch your stamina, and be careful not to create too many opportunities for your opponent if you're pressing the action. Hey there UFC fans, creative director Brian Hayes here with some more tips to help you out with the new striking gameplay in EA Sports UFC 3. When somebody's trying to knock your block off or cave in your midsection, your first instinct will be to block, which is smart, but be aware, your block can be broken down when it absorbs too many strikes. There's a block meter up in the fighter hood that shows you your block strength. But if you're too busy trying to survive to glance up there, just remember, you can't just hold the block button and expect to survive a sustained assault unscathed. Use your footwork, head movement, switch your stance, or use your own offense to avoid taking damage and give your block strength some time to regenerate. If you're trying to break down your opponent's block, combinations are a good strategy. By striking in combination, you can attack different regions or attack the same region from different angles, both of which help you do damage and break through your opponent's defense quicker. Every fighter in the game can perform a variety of combinations. You can find them in the game help screen from the pause menu. If you're looking for a low risk environment to practice combinations, check out practice mode. What's up UFC fans, we're back here with some more advanced tips to help you out when it comes to striking in EA Sports UFC 3. Strike canceling is a new feature in the game this year. This means if you hit the high block during the initiation phase of any strike, you will cancel that strike. You can use strike canceling to faint strikes and fake out your opponent, or to bail on a risky move if you see that you're out of range. Stopping power is another new wrinkle in EA Sports UFC 3. Basically, anytime you land a strike while your opponent is winding up and throwing one of their own, stopping power comes into play. Either by interrupting the strike altogether or reducing the damage it does if it lands against you. Stopping power also affects your opponent's locomotion, so a stiff jab or a straight can be helpful in keeping a pressure fighter from advancing. The effect of frame advantage in the game is greater too. Frame advantage determines how fast you can block, move your head, lunge, basically perform any action after you miss or land a strike. This means that every strike has its own level of risk and reward. If you miss a quick jab, you'll be able to recover very quickly, but a jab only does a little damage. Whereas, if you miss with a big roundhouse kick, 
you might be unable to defend yourself against a well-timed attack from your opponent while you're recovering. That said, landing a big roundhouse to the head does big damage. Salutations UFC fans, creative director Brian Hayes here with some information to help you out if the fight goes to the ground. First things first, don't freak out. You don't have to get up right away. Take your time. You just got here. If you've been taken down by a more experienced grappler, they're going to expect you to try and get right back up. And doing what your opponent expects is a recipe for disaster. Your grapple HUD will show you what transitions you can perform from your current position. Push and hold the right stick in the direction you want to go and let the transition meter fill up. And boom, you're in the new position. If you don't see an option to get up, try pressing the left bumper button, which reveals alternate transitions that are available. Stamina is also important on the ground. If your stamina is low, take a breather and let it recover to give yourself a better chance of pulling off a transition attempt. Transition attempts can be denied by holding the right trigger and matching the same direction as a transition with the right stick. In some positions, landing a strike on your opponent can stop their transition attempt too. Completing transitions, denying transitions, landing strikes, and block blocking strikes can all build up your grapple advantage, which makes it easier for you to pull off your next transition. So, if you get taken down and always try to get right back up, you might be doing exactly what your opponent expects, giving them an easy denial that will build up their grapple advantage and make it easier for them to advance position. Sometimes it helps if you're patient, throw some strikes, block some strikes, and let your opponent try to make the first move. What's up UFC fans, Brian Hayes here with some helpful tips for escaping or finishing submissions. If you're not comfortable with the idea of your opponent choking you unconscious or breaking your arm, the submission game can be stressful. But there's good news. Escaping a submission is really not that complicated. I'm not saying it's always going to be easy, but it's not complicated. If your opponent locks on a submission, the only thing you need to worry about is the right stick. Push the right stick up down, left, or right to move any one of the break walls all the way to the edge of the submission. Do that and you're out. Your opponent can block you from moving a break wall by matching the same direction with the right stick. If you're pushing on a wall and it's not moving, push the right stick in another direction. Every submission has multiple stages. If your opponent advances the submission to another stage, all your break walls move back towards the middle. The more you push each break wall out, the more of your escape progress will be retained if your opponent advances the submission. So it's a good idea to attack all four break walls early in the submission. If you're trying to finish a submission, you have to prevent your opponent from pushing any break wall all the way out. We already covered that. You also have to watch for the left stick prompts to advance the submission. The left stick prompts will be the same color as your fighter's hut, red or blue. One wrinkle to throw in the mix. Some fighters have advanced submissions with the potential to switch or chain into a deeper stage of a new submission. When a green left stick prompt shows up, that is a submission chain prompt. If the attacker hits it first, they'll switch to the new submission. If the defender hits it first, the chain opportunity is canceled and you stay in the same submission.
fighting. Hello, fight fan, and welcome to career mode in EA Sports UFC 3. Every fighter has to have goals. Yours is to become the greatest of all time. You'll need to do more than just win fights and championships, though. To become the GOAT, you'll need to break UFC performance and promotional records to make your mark inside and outside the octagon. Whether you're training to improve your attributes, performing drills to unlock new techniques, or promoting yourself to gain fans and build up fights against your biggest rivals, the decisions you make in career mode will determine your legacy in the UFC. Greatness awaits. Go take it. Welcome to EA Sports UFC Ultimate Team, the mode that lets you build and customize a team of UFC fighters to compete online or offline in a variety of exciting challenges. Every fight earns you coins you can use to purchase Ultimate Team Packs containing better fighters, better moves, and other ways to improve your team. Powerful new items are available all the time. Compete in Ultimate Championships, Single Player Championships, or the all-new solo challenges to rank up, earn coins, and build your baddest UFC Ultimate Team. Hey everyone, Jeff Harrower here, back with another content update, and we're going to start off with the big changes we've made to head movement. The biggest change to head movement is how it interacts with combinations. So before this content update, anytime you successfully slipped a strike, you would get 36 frames of safety where you could throw a counter strike. With this content update, uh, that's completely changed. If you successfully slip a jab, uh, your opponent's combination will not be slowed down whatsoever. This makes throwing combos a very effective way of dealing with people who abuse head movement. Now, to demonstrate this with uh, one of our new fighters in the content update, Mike Perry, you're going to see that my opponent is going to slip the one and counter with a hook, and you'll notice that the, the two follows the one and interrupts the counter. As you can see, uh, slipping the one two still has the two land, uh, making combinations a very effective way to interrupt uh, slip strikes. With these changes, you're probably thinking the combinations are considerably more powerful than they were before, and that's true. But there's several ways that you can deal with them. Uh, the safest op option is to block the second strike in the combo after slipping the first. This ability to block strikes on the return to center after a slip is a new feature as part of this new content update. The next safest option is to slip and throw a straight punch in return against the combo. Now, the slipping straight is a very fast counter strike and in general will typically be fast enough to intercept any incoming combo. I'll demonstrate that here by throwing a jab followed by a hook and my opponent will intercept that with a slipping straight. And finally, if your opponent's being very predictable and you know exactly what combination he's going to throw, you can always chain two slips in a row. In this case, I'll throw a 1-2 combination and my opponent will slip uh, to the outside of each strike. If you can predict a full three strike combo from your opponent, you can really punish them hard by slipping all three strikes, which will drain a lot of their stamina, and then your counter strike will be even more effective. We've also added a new control input for head movement. I'm going to call this major and minor sways or major and minor head movement. With a very light flick of the stick you get a quicker smaller uh, slip to the side, a quicker smaller duck, and a quicker and smaller back sway. Now if I hold the stick a little, little bit longer 
I'll play a much bigger side slip, a much bigger duck, and a much bigger backsway. The minor slips cost considerably less stamina and expose your fighter to considerably less vulnerability. The counter strikes off of the minor sways are a lot faster. By timing them properly, you can get very quick counter strikes off of these minor sways. The minor sways, however, have some drawbacks. The minor sways don't auto hold if timed early against a strike. I'll show that here by doing an early side slip and my opponent will throw straight. You'll see I still get hit. If I do a major side sway where my opponent throws a straight, my fighter will hold the sway and evade the straight. A minor back sway will always be intercepted by a straight punch regardless of range. And minor back sways will only evade hooks and uppercuts if done at proper range. The major backsway has big advantages now in terms of evading hooks and uppercuts. The backsway will evade all hooks and uppercuts regardless of range, even against a forward moving hook or uppercut. If your opponent's in the proper range, a backsway will still not work against a head kick. And to demonstrate the changes to ducking, I'm going to bring out Stefan Struve and Daniel Cormier, who probably have the biggest height difference in the game. Uh, ducking is now very much dependent on the height of the fighters. You'll have to duck below your opponent's shoulder position when he's fully extended throwing a jab. What this means is Daniel Cormier will be able to evade hooks from Stefan Struve, even with the minor sway. But of course, if you want to play it safe, if you can duck all the way down, get a lot more distance on your duck, and avoid strikes with a lot more consistency. Now with a taller fighter like Struve, major or minor ducks don't matter at all. His duck will be completely ineffective against a shorter fighter like Daniel Cormier. And one more big change to head movement relates to stopping power and something the community has referred to as a sway and prey. Now, the problem with sway and pray is people would preemptively throw slipping strikes over and over again, trying to bait out a counter strike, and it was pulling players into a 50 50 guessing game that they didn't want to play. And there was no effective way to punish someone who's employing this strategy. Uh, we've made changes to the, the stopping power logic so that if a slipping strike lands without first effectively evading a strike from the opponent, uh, it will have no stopping power, uh, which allows the opponent to throw a strike of their own and intercept the slip striker in high vulnerability on the recovery frames. This gives players an effective way to punish the strategy. That's it for this content update. Uh, hit me up on Twitter and let me know what you guys think. Hey everyone, Jeff Harrower here, lead gameplay engineer on EA Sports UFC 3, back with another gameplay video relating to our latest content update. This is the second video for this latest content update. The first video talked about all the changes to head movement. In this video, we'll talk about all the other changes we made in this latest update. The first new feature I wanted to show off is a new backwards evasive locomotion tool that you can use by holding down the right trigger and the right bumper simultaneously. And pressing away from your opponent. Uh, this allows you to retreat at high speed while evading your opponent's strikes, allowing you to get out of trouble and get out to kicking range very quickly. Now I'll show this off here. Uh, Frankie Edgar throws a few forward moving strikes in combination. I'll block the first few and then retreat out to kicking range. You can see this is a very effective tool for creating and maintaining space 
but it does come at the cost of high stamina loss, so it's something you're going to want to use sparingly. Another improvement to footwork that people are asking for is changes to the intercept logic between straight punches and back lunges. And now before this content update, if I did a back lunge and it was intercepted with a straight punch, the back lunge would be halted in its tracks, making it hard to, to create space. Now, if a straight punch lands against the back lunge, the back lunge continues its momentum and is allowed to continue to completion. Another big change with this content update is we've added the ability to block the counter punch after a catch kick. This is something that was uh, heavily requested by the community, um, but we needed to find a good way to do it to keep the balance with body kicks. So you'll see that uh, when the counter strike is blocked, it still bleeds through 50% damage. Uh, this should open up the mix up between counter striking and taking your opponent down after the catch kick while still allowing you to punish someone for throwing uh, too many body kicks. Another change requested by the community to allow people to better create and maintain space is to fix a problem where the push kick, front kick to the body was not pushing the opponent back if he was caught mid-slip. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that here. And finally, we've changed how grapple advantage is awarded based off of leg damage. Prior to this content update, your current leg damage would impact grapple advantage, but the long-term leg damage would have no, no real impact. We've changed that up so that long-term leg damage has a big impact on grapple advantage, as you can see here by the damage that Poirier is taking and the grapple advantage that Gaethje gets. Uh, that's it for this content update. Big changes. I suggest people give all the head movement changes a try before going into rank. Uh, this is probably the big cha biggest change to the meta uh, since we've launched the game. Hope you guys all like it. Can't wait to hear your feedback.